Hey everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Strike from Universal Rackets, and in this video, we are going to be talking about how to hit and how to return a lob. Mm. If you stay tuned for this whole video, once again, we are going to be going over all the tips and all the tricks on how to hit an effective lob and how to return the lob when someone lobs you. Now, why is the lob so essential in pickleball? Why do players need to learn this shot? The lob is great to catch your opponents off guard. Um, it can get them really far out of position if you can hit a nice lob to the baseline. It's also important to understand the strategy behind where and when to hit a lob, but it can really get into people's heads. For sure. And many players think you have the drive, you have the drop, but then you also have this third shot in your tool belt, which is the lob. The lob can be used from the baseline when you serve and then you have your third shot, but also the lob can be used up at the kitchen which is one of your favorite shots, the dink lob. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done that, but yeah. So I'm excited to uh, have you teach us and share with everyone your amazing dink lob. Yeah. Now, when you return the lob, there's two main things that you can do when someone lobs you. Actually, three. Number one, you can turn sideways and smash it down like an overhead, overhead smash. Number two is you can let the ball bounce, let it go over your head, and then you can hit it. And number three, you can just look at your partner like we do, like I do for our games, and just say, you, you get it, you're on your own. So we're going to be going over, again, the three things that you can do when someone lobs you as well. So should we get started? Yeah. Let's get started. We're going to talk about the baseline lob, back at the baseline, like you have your third shot. And then we're going to have you teach the dink lob. Okay. And then we're going to teach how to return the lob. So we're going to go over to smash and then when it goes over your head. Okay. All right. So when you're hitting the lob, you need to think about these things. Number one, where do you want to place the lobs? I want to talk about placement. So you want to place the lob as deep in the court as possible because anything too shallow, they can get their paddle on it. And the goal of the lob is for your opponents not to be able to reach it out of the air. And ideally, you want to hit the ball above them deep to their backhand. Yes. Because if it's to their backhand, they're going to have a hard time taking a backhand overhead. Yes. So, so identify where the backhand is. So number one, you want to identify the backhand. Like you said, you want to get it deep, which is perfect. And then the other thing that you want to do is hit it in the middle of the court. Down the middle solves the riddle, magic middle. Because in the middle, if you can lob into the middle of the court, it's going to cause a ton of miscommunication. Especially many players, when they go and play and rec play and open play, it's the first time that they've even met that person. So their communication is probably lower than normal. Right. So go to the middle, it's gonna be very effective. The worst thing you can do when even thinking about a lob though is to lob the ball out of bounds. Yes. I'd almost rather you take a drive into the net than lob the ball intentionally and then it happens to go out of bounds because the point's completely over and you could have hit the ball anywhere else on the court. And that's a huge thing. The worst thing that you can do is have the ball go out of bounds with your lob. And, and it's just so detrimental and embarrassing and annoying. <laughs> yes, so what you have to do is you have to have big targets. And what we mean by that, again, aim for the middle of the court. If you get more comfortable, target their backhand. Also, you want to have tons of margin. If you play with height, it's going to be all right. You want to think really up into the air to allow gravity to do the work. Another thing where many players go wrong when they try to execute the lobs is that they try to go too deep and keep it too perfect. If you can aim for the middle of the court and say around here rather than around here, it's going to be so much better. Hmm. Because again, if you aim so deep at the line, you're going to miss long too many times. So I would rather have you miss a little bit more shallow and in the court as long as it's to the middle rather than have you aim super out wide to target their backhand or super deep into the court. Right, and one other thing on strategy too is I'd rather you hit the ball too shallow and let them get their paddle on it and hit you in overhead and you can kind of test out their overhead skills too. Like, are they falling back on their feet? Can you drive the ball after they hit an overhead? You can kind of see how much power they have as well. So I'd rather you be able to defend an overhead than put the ball out of bounds perfectly. Now, when are some ideal conditions to lob in? Number one is wind. Guys, these are pickleballs. To lob? Yeah, when there's wind. Mm. What? Can I go ahead and disagree yeah, with that? sounds good. Because if it's windy, it's gonna blow right out of bounds. So if you can understand where the wind's going. Okay, if you have all the perfect information <laughs> on the wind. 
I will lob in the wind all the time because you think the ball's a wiffle ball. And your ball will go out of bounds. And then I'm going to get mad at you. And you pop it up to someone with their overhead, which we're going to teach you further in this video, and the ball's moving with the wind, it's going to be so difficult for them to track it. Also, if they use our first recommendation, we're aiming for the middle of the court, unless the wind's coming like a hurricane and they're probably not supposed to be playing pickleball, then you're going to be good. Michelle, the ball's not going to just I would go rather up you, and then when, fly when to the When it's windy side. and we play in a tournament, it's so good. You want to know why? Because you drive. I love when you drive in the wind. Okay. Well, this video is about lobs. It's about lobs. And I'm going to take that with a well. grain of salt. You're the, not wrong. I the like the idea that, that, the overhead, that the overhead is hard to hit with the wind, okay. but what if the wind blows your lob out of bounds? On our next windy day, we'll go out and drill. I'll lob them up to you and you'll see how... Um, awesome it is to hit overheads in the wind. The second thing that you want to do is what is the color of most pickleballs? It's yellow. What else is the color of yellow? That the good sun. old thing called the sun. If the sun is shining directly into your opponent's face, I want you to use the lob more than usual. Let's take it back. Remember when the match with Annalie and her mom? Yeah, she got super mad at the person. So lobbing. mad. Yeah, okay. They lobbed every single ball into the sun and she could not see. And it is a controversy. There's some people in pickleball that say, hey, the lob's not a real shot. In it's pickleball. rude. Yeah, the lob's rude. The lob's not right, especially when you're playing some older, amazing folks. However, a game's a game. It's part of the game, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep on lobbing until someone shows me that they can hit a really good overhead. So if you can pop this ball up in the sun, if your opponents are ever having the sun face directly at them, it is impossible to track down that ball. Once again, it is impossible to track down the ball, but in this video, we're going to teach you how to track the ball in the sun when we go over returning lobs, okay? So again, if you want to listen to me, go when it's windy and in the sun. If you I mean, want to listen to Michelle, wrong. I just disagree. I'd, I'd hit a drive instead of a lob in the wind. But I get what you're saying that it's going to be hard for them to hit an overhead. You yes. can test it out. How many shots do you get in a game? <laughs> test it out. It's fine. The big thing, once we give you all this amazing technique, <laughs> tactics, and tips, is to not use the lob as a cop out shot. Mm. So, once again, for everyone in this video, before we teach you these amazing shots and how to lob and the best lobs ever, we have to put up our paddles, put up your paddle, and say, I, user, one, two, three, four, five, will not use the lob as a cop-out shot. Tennis players, cough, cough, tennis players. Or when you get tight, when you get nervous, you will maybe revert to or lobbing. Or you're not sure what, what shot to, do. to take. So you have no clue if you should drive or you drop or you second guess yourself. And then you pop up a ball like this. It's a weak lob. <laughs> it was like a lob drop right there. And then they smash it down you need to utilize your lob with intention. Once again, you need to use your lob with intention. You don't use it as a cop-out shot. So, are we going to get into the technique? Can't wait to see it. Let's go. So the first thing about the technique and what makes an amazing lob, in addition to our intentions, is disguise. Disguising. Trying to not have our opponents read the lob, okay? The drive is swinging forward. The dink is swinging a little bit up. The drop is swing a little bit more up. The further back I am, and the more I want to hit a lob, the more up I have to hit. Once again, I want you to think for the lob, when I drive the ball or I drop, I'm going a little bit more out, right? The difference between a drop and a lob is a lob, I am really going up in the air. That was, was that a really good one, out? that was in. I got a little bit nervous when I hit that one. That was the first shot of the day. I thought it was going to go out, and then you guys aren't going to listen to me because you're like, he hit his first lob out. He has no clue what he's talking you're about. You're pretty good at lobs. Yeah, because it comes from tennis. But the whole thing is you want to swing up. You want to lift the ball. Instead of swinging forward, again, a drive, I swing super forward. A drop, I swing forward and up. The lob, I'm going to lift the ball. Now, here's a big thing that many players go wrong. When they hit their lob, they use their wrist. I want Michelle to use her full arm and her shoulder. Again, use her full arm and her shoulder. Now, how high and how far do we need to hit this ball? Like how many feet? We need some energy. We need to give this ball some juice to get over the net and to get high. Yeah. So instead of just going like this, what you're going to do is you're going to step with your non-dominant foot and then you're going to go like this. By stepping with your foot, that's gonna help you get, get power into your lob, okay? So again, you're going to step and you're going to lift. 
Yeah, so the power is going to come from the ground up with your legs, and then the accuracy and the finesse is coming from the shoulder, not your wrist. Yes, that's a huge thing. And once you're done, again, so a dink, you're going to finish with your paddle here. A drop maybe up here. A lob, you're going to finish with your paddle up, oh, up higher. Head. Yeah, to the point that the tip of your paddle should be pointing to the sky. Not vertical, because again, if we finish like this, what does that mean? We used our wrist. We're flipping the burgers. I'm finishing all the way up here. Kind of like you're doing like a, a pose or something, okay? So again, I'm going to step with my non-dominant foot and I'm going to then lift up in the air. I'm going to step and I'm going to lift. And this is a great drill that you can do if you don't have a beautiful partner um, like yours truly. Um, you can just drop balls to you and hit. So again, you're going to drop it, you're going to step, and then you're going to hit. Let's do a couple real quick. Okay. So Michelle's going to hit the ball to me, and I'm going to step and go up. I'm going to step and go up. Is that in? Yeah. Notice, all I'm doing is I'm popping the ball up in the air. The higher I hit it, the more difficult it's going to be for my opponent to track it down. Stepping and going up. I'm lifting the Whoa. ball up in the air. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, I am probably holding the paddle, 10 being the tightest, I'm probably holding the paddle at a two or a three. If you hold the paddle super tight, it's gonna go just straight up in the air and you're gonna have to arm it Yeah. and it's not gonna work. You need to be loose and again, just lift and finish the ball up. The big thing that I need every single person to understand is that it's okay to hit the ball up super high because what's it going to do? It's going to make it more difficult for my opponent. Right. The higher I hit the ball in the air, the more difficult it's going to be for my opponent, but then also the more margin for error I'm going to have. So unless you're playing indoors somewhere with a ceiling, it's fine to go high. Do you have something to say? I do. It's going to give you a higher margin of error and then also a really super, super high lob also gives me, your opponent, time to get to the ball. Yes, and time. You know what I mean? So let's talk about the idea. We kind of mentioned it in, at the intro, but like the most ideal lob is obviously going to be unreachable by me as yep. your opponent. Secondly, it's going to bounce literally on the baseline over my backhand. And then third, I'm not, I'm not going to have time to come around, chase it, and hit it back. It's going to bounce out of bounds faster than I'm going to be able to get to it. So that's your ideal lob. Over their head, to their backhand, on the baseline, and unreturnable. Yes. So if you can get all four of those to happen, that's a perfect lob. So don't try to baby it, right? It's perfectly fine. That high, okay, now she can let bounce. So if you hit it high and shallow, and it's not a tennis ball, but if you hit it high enough, the ball is going to bounce up high enough that your opponent could just smash it down. Right. So you wanna go deep and again to the middle. So again, deep and to the middle, maybe to the side, but still, go up to the kitchen real quick. So she returns the ball, right? Now she has her second shot return. Then look, here we are. Ah! Okay, she played that, that's okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> so here's the next thing. What do you wanna do when you hit a good lob? If you Move hit up. a good lob and you see your opponent go back, you need to move forward. Coaches, they express Aggressively. so much. They express so many times. Mm. Oh, when you hit a good drop, move forward. You hit a good drop. Why are you standing there? What are you doing? Stop waiting for it. No, when you hit a good lob, you need to move up. Whenever you see your opponent turn their back or move back, you are going to move Pounce. forward. You're going to capitalize and pounce on that opportunity. You need to make sure, again, the moment that I hit a good lob, as you saw what I did previously when I was playing against you, is what did I do? I moved up. Now, did I think about doing that? No, that but that was probably from years and years. And from seeing lobs on defense, almost any great player that can hit a nice lob, their second shot is almost always a drive because you just caught me totally on defense, running to the baseline, like restarting the point all over. 
I don't know if I can get myself back into position because I just did everything I needed to just get my paddle on the ball and to get it back over the net. Now they're attacking me. Now I'm really on defense. If you don't attack me, you're, you've given up everything that you worked for with the lob to begin with. So every great player will lob and then drive. Every single time I yes. get lobbed, I get driven at next. Yes. Makes sense. Unless, okay, maybe both you guys are back though. If we're both back, you can hit a drop, like a, like a little tennis drop yeah, shot but five. Probably but most drop, likely, drive. I'm getting driven at because I'm back at the baseline. You're not. If you hit a drop shot to me, you're gonna reset me to the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I don't mean like a like a drop volley. I mean like a third shot drop. Yes. So now what we're going to do, because this is going to die, we're going to go up to the kitchen and we're going to show them the What's Michelle. Gonna special the what's dink gonna, wait lob. what's gonna die the microphone so our time's limited let's go here we are move up we'll keep it rolling either way we'll just talk loud so for the dink lob the best 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 time in the whole world to hit a dink lob is when the ball is hit super shallow into the court so everyone's like chasing for a shallow ball and everyone's up at the net and you hit a dink lob they have to go all the way back to the baseline to return it so that's your ideal time. Guys, she's the lob. queen of dink lobs. Like she makes them look so good. And maybe because I'm your husband, but I think they're so cute when you got someone just like, whoosh, you look amazing doing it. Um, so here's the thing. Let's show them the situation again, what we mean, okay? Is like, we'll be dinking, right? So we'll be dinking normally. And then I'll hit a super shallow one. And then I think I'm going, and then look, she gets me and then. And now I have to win the point. <laughs> All right. Oh, she's going to get it. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Amazing, okay? So it's when you expect that you're going to lean in, you're going to be aggressive. Yeah. And then instead of being aggressive, getting that high ball, what are you going to do? Dang. Lob it up over me. Because everyone's, mo their momentum's coming in. And I'm even talking about net cords. If you can get a ball off the net cord, hit a nice dink lob off that. Yeah. So you mean it bounces in, right? And then I'm here, I like, run in, and now I think you're going, yeah. It has to be high enough though over the backhand. And cannot get to his forehand paddle or you're done. And what's the main thing with the dink lob that you want to do? <laughs> to get everyone back out of position. Yes, 100%. But by doing so, it's like catching them by surprise. Yeah. So you, can you teach everyone a little bit more technical on how to properly disguise the dink lob. Something else that we haven't discussed that's super important to this video. You will never hit a great lob if you're not in the right position. So to be in great positioning, you have to have space and time on your side. So you can throw up a cop out lob like we all swore not to do. But if you want to hit a good dink lob, you have to have space to move up to the ball, have your paddle out, be stepping for it, and then go up with your paddle. So essentially your partner is probably going to expect you to dink the ball when you're at the kitchen, if you're even moving into the kitchen. So it looks like a dink, but the only difference between a dink and a dink lob is that you extend all the way up like we talked about in the beginning of the video. And I like that you extend up like we talked about in the video. One big thing I think with the dink lob mm -hmm. is not taking a big backswing, kind of like the speed up. You want to no think it's a dink swing. lob, right? So Michelle's going to keep her paddle out. And then all she's going to do is instead of just going forward, a little extra bend in your knees. All she's going to do extend. is get lower and then come up. Yeah. So it's last minute. Mm -hmm. You want to hold your paddle out as long as possible. And then that last minute go up. Yeah. And you have to be able to have the space to do it. And you have to be able to have the accuracy to not get totally trashed on it. Yeah. And again, tell them where you're aiming. If you're playing the right side, where are you aiming your lob to land to the middle? Yeah, to the middle, which it, it deep in the baseline ends up being over this forehand and more towards this left side of the transition zone, like a little bit to the left because then it's really over this person's backhand. And another big thing too is understanding your opponent's movement levels. So what I mean by that is if you have someone that's super athletic, super fast, and they can move back and just easily smash it down, which yeah. it happens, it's kind of right. depressing trying to lob them. But if you see someone, they have trouble moving back, they haven't watched this video, which we're getting into, and how to move back for a lob, then maybe you have a little bit more margin for error because you know that they're not going to get back there. And if you take it six inches to this side, they're yeah. not gonna get their paddle on it. They can move as much as they want, but 
physics will not allow them to get a high ball to their opponent's back. So let's do our favorite drill that we do. So you're going to be here. Okay. I'm going to just feed you or toss you a ball. You're going to try to wait till last minute to do your disguise. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go. So again, you're going to wait till last minute and then go up. Dink. Last minute. Lob. Good. And that's so good. I can't get that. My partner is not. So I lean in, right? And then she now, look. Okay, that was a little bit out. But still, it's such a good tactic to do, especially once in a while. You have to really commit to it. And that's the thing, too. You want to do this when you don't, you don't want to do this every single time, okay? You don't want to do this every single time. You want to do this once in a while to like throw once every game, honestly. your opponents off. Unless you really see them struggling with it. Don't try to go out wide for I just don't want to put it to your forehand. Freaking YouTube video. Start missing wide. You got the whole freaking court. All right, so you're going to do a dink and then you're going to do a lob. Okay. Your goal right now is to disguise it and then last minute again go up. So here we are. So dink. Now lob. Nice. Dink. Lob. And here, it's all about the disguise last minute, right? It's all about the disguise. Now, the difference between a dink lob and a lob at the baseline is you have less distance to cover. So you can't swing as forward as you did back at the baseline as you, you are here. Really you have to really swing up. Mm -hmm. And what did you mention, which I thought was an amazing tip that I didn't really think about before, is what? Getting into your legs. Because by getting into your legs, that's going to allow you to get under the ball more. So I want you to really step and get your back leg down. Here we are. Back leg down, dink. Now under, get low, up. Good. A little bit shallow though. Put some juice on it. But here's the thing, if you disguise it in normal match, even if it's shallow, it's going to work. Come on, here we are. If you miss too shallow, where's the next one? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So now, so now we're going to teach you what to do when someone lobs you. First, you call them a name in your head. What do you mean? Oh yeah, you <laughs> call them a name in your head. You pretend the ball's that person that really annoys at you. You look at it and then you smash the like, living. Are you kidding me? Remember I used to say no every time someone lobbed? I was like, no. And when I was saying no to you, it was because I was saying, no, I'm not going to get that. I would call that a hindrance. You would get so mad because you thought I was saying no, like out, like the ball was out. But I was like, no, like they're lobbing. I'm not getting it. You're getting it. Yeah, she makes me get all the lobs. But recently, again, I'm getting old. I hurt my shoulder. So you have to run down the I've lobs for me. I've been running down some lobs. Yeah, you have been. OK, so I'm a here's, lob reset kind of girl, though. Here's the thing. Number one thing for returning lobs is communication between yourself and your partner. Yeah. I like to say, we all like to have a designated driver when you go out after mm -hmm. these awesome pickleball matches, thanks to drinks. Mm -hmm. However, you want to have a designated lob person. So I like to say either she's got it or I got it. So what I mean by that is when the ball's up in the air, she's going to call it or I'm going to call it. Okay, I know automatically, Michelle, every single time that ball goes up in the air, you got it. Every single time. I don't care where the ball goes, you got it. Yeah. Or you don't care where the ball goes, I got it. You don't want, the one thing that you don't want is when they aim to the middle because they already watched this first half of this video. Mm -hmm. You got it. You got it. I got it. I got it. And then if you do that, you're probably going to be walking home from your match after because your partner is going to get mad at you. So you have a designated lob person. And if you're afraid to designate that person, you just pick the player on the uh, left side of the court. And why do you want to pick the player on the left side of the their court? their forehand, if they're a righty, is in the middle. Yes. Now, what are we going to do? So it's going to be here, it's going to be here. You're over here, I'm over here. I'm the de designated lobber, someone lobs us. What do you say? You, or you say you. no, but don't say no. I haven't said no in a while, because I say that you. drives your opponent crazy, or partner crazy, that they're, she's calling the ball out. But or it makes me more mad to hit the ball harder. But then what, the ball's up in the air, you say you, you, and then I go, and then I go and hit. Now the big thing, okay, make sure this person gets out of the way. We've heard a story where someone got a concussion because they went to swing and they hit their partner on the head, okay? Now here's some information on the safety for court awareness in general. He moved back for that demonstration. Do what you just did. 
he moved back into the side, so I'm moving back into the side. Yes. Every time you're on court, if your partner moves back into the side, you move back into the side. Yeah. If not, you're going to start opening up holes in the court, and it's going to be harder to cover and protect your court. So you want to think that we have a, like a chain link tied next to us or handcuffs tied next to us. Not really handcuffs, but between here. Like we have we a just, rope here. Together. So if I move here, she's going to move here. If I move here, she's going to move here. But far enough, again, that you don't get whacked in the head. Yeah, but if I'm paddle. moving with you, we should be some distance apart yeah, at all times. So we should never be together now, on the court. A big thing with this, okay? When someone lobs you, the first thing that you need to do is turn sideways. Again, this is going to be how to hit a smash. Do you want to check that's still recording? Sure. So again, when someone lobs you, the first thing that you want to do is turn sideways. Many players, where they go wrong, is that they move back this way. When I move back this way, I'm going to hit down into the net. The first thing that you do again is you turn sideways. You turn to the right if you're a right-handed player, you turn to the left if you're a left-handed player. When I turn sideways, look where my paddle is. I turn sideways and my paddle is back. It's kind of like I'm doing a trophy pose, like an old school tennis trophy, okay? I could be able to know that I'm in the proper position, tap the paddle on the top of my head. So my elbow's back, it's like I'm elbowing someone. So I can think my elbow's back, my paddle's on top of my head, and my hand is up in the air. Now, why do you want to use this hand up in the air? Gives you better balance. Gives you balance, and okay. It lets you track the ball. Lets you track the ball, yes. It lets you track the ball. So players, they can't locate the ball, but by pointing at the ball or getting your hand under the ball, that's going to give you the guide, the GPS, to make proper contact with the ball. And proper contact is all you need for a good overhead. So again, yes. So again, I'm here. I see that my opponent's going to lob. The first thing I do is here. And I just want you to do a couple drills. Get up off your chair, wherever you are right now. If you're working right now, stand on front of your desk, wherever. And just go like this, here to the side. Here to the side, here to the side. Then what are you going to do? You're going to move back, you're going to shuffle, okay? Wherever the ball is. Wherever the ball is going to go. Not just shuffling aimlessly. And then you're going to hit. Because the ball is going to be moving in the air, and that's the point of the hand with your feet. Now here's two big things. There's shuffles and then there's crossovers. Shuffles is when the ball is close to you. Again, I turn, if the ball is kind of close to me, I feel like I have time, I'm going to shuffle back, okay? I'm not backpedaling back again, I'm shuffling back. I'm turning and shuffling. Mm -hmm. If I want to get to cover more distance, if the ball's further back, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to cross over my feet. Again, so when a ball's closer to you, I want you to think that you're shuffling. When the ball's further back, watch what I'm going to do. If I have cover, I'm going to cross, I'm going to cross, then I'm going to shuffle. And think about it, when you get to right where you want to be after you do that footwork, you're going to have all of your momentum in your back leg. You're going to be able to take that power locate the ball with proper contact, rotate your body, and come down on the ball, and they're gonna wish they never lobbed you. Yes, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do my favorite drill to learn lobs. Now, a lot of coaches, and they come from tennis, but then pickleball coaches too, because this is written in the training rule books, they say, okay, you wanna tell your student to point at the ball. Pointing at the ball, I think gets you 50% there. If you wanna get 100% there, I want you to think that you're an outfielder and instead of pointing the glove like you're an outfielder in baseball, you're going to catch the ball. If you can catch the ball with your non-dominant hand, that's exactly where you want to make contact with the ball. So Michelle, you can toss the ball up in there if you want. And I'm going to catch it. Here we are. And then again, that's going to be exactly where I make contact. Now, before we rip open the comments, again, I know I caught the ball in the kitchen, can't hit an overhead smash in the kitchen, but we're not worried about the kitchen right now. We're worried about the technique. So what I like to do too, if you're new to this, step one, be in this position. So I turn sideways again, I can tap the paddle on my head, my elbow, I'm elbowing someone, my hand's out, right? I'm going to get under it, catch, and then I could toss it up, and then I could hit it. <laughs> I don't wanna hit you, because you look too pretty today. Here we are, you're gonna to toss it up, so I turn, here we are, catch, and then I'm going to hit. A big thing is, you wanna keep your head up, and you always wanna be moving. Players, they will do this, right? Toss ball up in there, I kinda of did that. Here, I got it. Ah, oh, no, it was back here. Look, I was in proper position. The reason why, the ball is not falling from the heavens. It's not coming straight down. It's coming towards me and down. So I need to continually be moving until I get in that proper possession. And when you turn and your hand's already up before you move, that ensures that you're already going to arrive at the ball, at the best contact, in the best position. You have to have that pose and that 
positioning in your body before you start moving your feet. So it's body first, then feet, right, babe? Body first, turning. Yeah, turn, up. hand yeah. up, then move. Yeah. Because you can't, like, that's how I mess up too. And I'm like, I have awful overheads. Why do I have bad overheads? Yes. <laughs> and it's because I'm thinking of doing everything all at the same time and I'm not doing it in the right order. And again, Michelle's further back from the camera, so she can't make her facial expressions for this. But I want you to literally think that you're doing a dance move, all right? Just own it, like boom, 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 right? If you can get into this habit of like hitting it, like, you know, we're going to that, um, what is it? This gala for our daughter, right? It's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring option. out my whip. You're not doing and my And my curves and no, my you're not. things like that, all right? I want you to think, guess what I'm gonna bring to this dance now? I'm gonna bring the overhead. All these moms at this school wanna learn how to play pickleball. Guess what I'm gonna teach them at the dance? We're gonna go, everyone, we're gonna do a dance party, teach you how to do these overheads. Like we're going in our amazing YouTube for all you guys, okay? So literally hit it, show some, put some pizzazz into it, all right? So here we are, watch what I'm gonna do. Instead of catching it now, I'm going to hit it, okay? Again, when I catch, I'm gonna here, here. Notice, when I do this, this is a big thing. I wanna make sure that I hit the ball fully extended. I wanna think early. I wanna think that I need to hit the ball at a high point. The next thing, I wanna keep my head up, keep my head up, make contact at a high point, and then I'm going to snap my wrist. I want you to think, we're watching W, uh, or what is that, March Madness, Women's March Madness, Caitlin oh Clark pulling up from three, flicking the wrist. Okay, one more time, here we are, in the bucket right here we are. Ball. Okay, that's why I play pickleball, not basketball, guys. <laughs> She was a basketball player before. I, I was, and I now you're it. so interested in women's basketball because of Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark. Yes. Never cared that your wife played it. <laughs> Never cared. I beat you all the time in horse. <laughs> okay, so again, what you're gonna do, getting back to the, the flick of the wrist, right? All that I'm going to do is snap my wrist down. Can I see a ball? Great, Julia, you could do snap the wrist down. Is literally put the paddle here and just snap down. I didn't want to hit the camera, but you're going to snap the wrist down. That's going to bring the ball in. So again, I'm going to turn sideways. Here we are. Hit the dance. Boom. There we are. And I'm going to hit it. Now I would do five, 10, 15 more, but I don't want my shoulder to fall off because we're going to be at the Delray Open later today with Fulfill promoting their new amazing protein bar. I can't wait. But uh, again, I don't want to look like to people like, hey, here we are. Try this protein with my uh, shoulder falling off. Okay. So there we are. Okay. Now, what are we going to do? What if the ball can't, you can't get to the ball? What if your opponent <laughs> just stares at you when you're playing pickleball? Your opponent, you come on court with this person, they're just staring at you. You, you told them that they had the overheads, but they're like, ah, you know what, screw it, I'm not, I'm not getting hurt, I'm not going for it, you're not going for it, and you watch the ball go over you. What do you have oh, to do? Oh, you mean your partner? What you're do you have at to your do? your partner or your opponent? Talking about like my past uh, pickleball trauma with you when you just Yeah, so you say your partner, you say you look at your opponent. You so mean you, you look at your partner. Your beautiful partner to go for the overhead smash. She just looks at it. There's one like to my forehead. I'm like, you. Yeah, Gabby like, knows this. We too. should make a video too. Like we should. the ball. And again, guys, <laughs> I love her so much. And like anytime I'm hard on her in these videos and pickleballs, because I want her to get really good. Because I am really good. Where's your 5 0 medal? <laughs> wonder, Where is it? Yeah, we still have to release that video, okay? Where is it? However, though, okay, here's what she does, right? So the ball will be right here. <laughs> yours! And then I'll like miss it. Like I'll be like, that was yours. She'll be like, why didn't you get it? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. Let me check that's still recording. What to do when the ball goes over your head? Well, what to do when the ball goes over the head? Well, here's what you do not want to do, okay? Here's what you do not want to do. And this is what happens for me, and this is what happens for tennis players or people who think that they can rip the ball because they come from a prior racket sports background, is they think they're gonna let the ball go over the head. They're so far back, they're gonna go fight or flight and whack the living crap out of it. How many times have you played with me? And oh. I'll do this shot because like my ego or what I cannot get out of my head. I'm just like YOLO. You only live once. I'm like ride or die, go for the fly, right? And I hit the ball literally like at the backboard. It's crazy. Like I, I don't even miss it in the court. It goes so long. It's in a palm tree up there. It would go like. over that fence back there. That's what I do. Like it'd probably hit that red roof over there, okay? Yeah. Instead of doing that, what you want to do is you just want to get the ball back. When the ball goes over you and your partner's head, their lob, because Michelle does this amazing dink lob or you learn all these tips and you hit an amazing lob. Now, if you're on the receiving end of that, what you have to do is you have to realize when you go back and the ball gets over your head, you're on defense. The goal is to get another ball back, okay? Because don't end the point yourself by missing it, going for broke. Let your opponent end it. Now she's smiling, she's coming over here, so she has something I'm to say. I'm coming over here because there are stages. There are stages 
to the lob return that you cannot get your paddle on and hit your beautiful tennis with Tyler overhead. So if the ball is coming over your head and it's a perfect lob and it say it lands right on the baseline. Number one, get the ball over the net. I don't care if it's a tweener, get the ball over the net. Number one, that's your first priority. But if you want to go for perfect, like we talked about the perfect lob, lands on the baseline over their head, over their backhand. The perfect strategy though, for returning a lot that goes over your head is to make sure that you take your feet and you get behind the ball. You stop on this foot, you pivot, and then you can reset the ball in the kitchen. So that's the perfect lob over your head return. Not everyone can do that. So it's step number one do, is to get the ball back. But that's what you're looking for. Well, step number one is to accept that you're on defense. <laughs> to accept that you're on defense and you cannot win a point by going back here, hit an amazing shot. Even if you hit an amazing shot, your opponent's probably just gonna tap it back and then you're gonna be up here. Right. Also, big question is like, okay, you go back for love, where's my opponent go back? You wanna go back as well. You mean so, partner. Yeah, mean partner. So, so I'm here, right? You're up here. Opponent. I'm here. <laughs> they lob me, you just stare at it, you tell me to go, and right? And if he's going there, I'm So I'm going, going here. back, right? I'll yell out switch, but look, Michelle comes back with me. She's not gonna stay up because then mm -hmm. she's gonna probably eat the next ball. So here we are. So again, number one is accepting that you're on defense. So the ball goes over your head. Number one is to what? Just get the ball back in the air. Maybe hit the ball up to them, okay? Whenever you get hurt in pickleball, and what I mean by hurt is out of position, mm -hmm. pop the ball up in the air. Too many players will hit the ball, just right, try to hit the ball hard or right to them, and then, okay, the person at the kitchen is just gonna volley the ball and go boink right there, and you're done. When the ball is up in the air, your opponent can't touch it. Once again, yes. when the ball is up in the air, your opponent can't touch it. So if you play with height, you will be all right. Do you have anything and, to say? Yeah, and also like everything in pickleball, I mean, honestly, arguably, the, mo the biggest skill in pickleball is decision-making. It's not, everyone has the best drive or the best dink. It's when to use those. And every single time you get lobbed, you have choices. Are you gonna lob the ball back? Are you gonna try to drop the ball? Should you let the ball bounce because it could go right out of bounds? Or does it actually land on the baseline? You have to do something about it. If I feel like I'm moving super far back, I'm going to let the ball bounce because yeah. the further it's back you get, the too. more difficult it is to hit an overhead. Yeah. And like, unless you're like a division one, like college or uh, tennis or volleyball player, it's impossible to hit an amazing overhead from back here. Yeah. So what are you going to do? You're going to let the ball go over you. Whenever you get burned, again, tip number one is to what? Just pop the ball up in the air to your opponent again, okay? If you want to be even better, what you can do is you can move back. You're going to let the ball go over, and then you're going to reset it into the kitchen. Because if you can return your opponent's lob into the kitchen, what can't your opponent do? Hit the ball in the air while they're in the kitchen. And it gives you some more time to recover. Yes. So it's going to take a lot of practice to get to that ideal return lob that hits the baseline, but you need to make sure that you have your feet behind the ball, you pivot, and you reset the ball Let's into show the them. kitchen. Let's show them you. Our microphone died, so I am using my outdoor voice, but I had to keep on using my outdoor voice because we are going to show you the tweener. Now, if you're above the age of 35, 40, do not do this. If you do do this, don't say that you learned it from me or Universal Rackets, okay? When you don't have a microphone, you have to talk to the phone, but that's okay because I'm going to be running back and hitting this way, okay? Now, the tweener, I did it for so many times and I couldn't hit the tweener because I would hold my paddle like this. If you hold your paddle continental grip, then you're going to bring it behind like this. I'm gonna let the ball bounce again. I'm gonna go here. And there we are, <laughs> that's our tweener. Now, that's more of a difficult shot once again. Michelle, you can come over here. But uh, yeah, you could try to do that shot as well. So the big thing with the lob, right? 
and utilizing the lob and even utilizing the defense on the lobs, which we showed you again, either hit it back, reset it, or try to do a tweener if you're feeling uh, dangerous, okay, is to understand your opponent's tendencies. If you see that your opponent doesn't like to smash, if you see that your opponent can't run down the balls because their, their movement is a little bit less, right? you can capitalize on these shots based upon the player that you have, right? So we'll play some high level former college tennis players and you know if they lob them, if you lob them, they'll be able to literally cover the whole court and get back. Maybe we won't do it to them. However, if we're playing someone uh, else and it's a competitive match, <laughs> that's a little bit older, maybe you'll pop the ball up in the air to win more points because you know they will be slower getting back. Another good way to do that too is to get into their head. So yeah. you can hit a couple lobs in a row. If they, get, if they miss the first one, hit them another one and see yeah. what they're going to do. And lobs mind start games. Start melting down. Yeah, and that's the thing, especially with nerves and stuff. Like, I love to even do a lob serve, which we didn't teach about that, that, but we'll put a link in the description when we spoke about the lob serve, is a video on the lob serve is, like, when you pop the ball up high in the air, especially when you're playing competitive play, it gets in opponents' heads. They get mad. They're like, it why are you hitting them. me that it stuff? It triggers them. Yeah, and then you get mad, and then you have them miss. So you like, can play mental so games as well. Rude. And then they get all like, why are they being rude to me? And then they miss. Yeah. And then you get a point for serves editing them. Again, in a competitive setting. Um, so again, disguise the lob, right? Use it with intention. Don't have a cop out. We taught you how to return the lobs. Communicate with your partner. Have heavy margins when you're hitting the lobs. Aim for the middle, right? Try to aim deep with your partner. Have a designated lobber, returner, okay? Make sure you get out of the way so you don't get knocked with the paddle. Make sure you turn sideways. Make sure you don't face forward. Put your hand thing. up. Make hit sure the dance. Make sure you're on the same page with your partner. Yeah. With lobbing, like if you like, it's huge. Yeah, like don't don't upset your partner by lobbing too much. And that has happened um, in pickleball um, with us and with other people. You see, like they'll get a little bit tight. Like there'll be maybe a couple or like a, a team, right? And you'll literally like lob the ball because you get tight right to your opponent at the kitchen and Michelle's and up I at the kitchen it. like expecting a normal shot and then she just eats it she's like why the heck did you lob on that like yeah. that makes no sense so yeah, yeah lob with intention make sure you lob at the right time and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video again we went over how to return the lobs overhead smash was returning we went over to tweener a little bit again we didn't tell you to do that um disclaimer with that again lob with intention and hopefully you can add another shot to your tool belt which will allow you to win so many more points frustrate your opponents and yeah, just add another variety and aspect to your game. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know in the comments below. Again, we're speaking about Delray. We're going to be doing this amazing uh, event activation at the Delray Open. We're going to put the link in the description to our videos if you guys want to check them out. So good. They're the best protein bars ever. Uh, they kind of taste like candy, uh, but they taste so good. So we're going to put the link uh, in our description as well. Um, if you guys want any type of program in your area, make sure you click the link and Universal Rackets representative will get out to you. If you want any type of pickleball clinic, fundraising, event, corporate event, etc., we're here for you. We're doing an amazing event coming, I think, in two weeks in Philadelphia. I think on Market Street. It's going to be amazing. And yeah, if you guys want any amazing paddles, sure uh, click so the link fresh. in our description to get a gift card with your purchase. Make sure to follow the Pickle Yogi and Pickleball with Tyler on Instagram. Have a good one, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time.